I'd like to tell you that all companies have become sustainable. Um, the truth is that we're on a journey here. Um, and if I had to give us a report card, I'd say, wow, in the last 10 years, we've done very well. You know, B, B plus. Um, you know, 10 years ago, very few companies of the top 1,000 companies on the planet had a sustainability report, had a carbon disclosure uh, report, um, actually had someone who looked after sustainability or thought about innovation issues in this context. Very few people had charismatic products they could talk about that are actually sustainable. Very people had actually interacted with those products. You know, the examples that we had were things that didn't really work that well. Compact fluorescent light bulbs. You remember when they first came out, they kind of flickered, gave you that really terrible looking light. The first compostable garbage bags, you picked them up and they broke. There, there was a first generation of products in this arena that were expensive, um, and while they may have felt good, they didn't work very well. Um, well, since that time, things have started to change. And what we're really on is a journey. We start, and you probably know these people, hopefully you're, you're not one of them, with a sense of rejection. If you're sitting here going, he just talked about climate change and I don't believe in climate change, it's not been proven, it's not affecting me, and how do you know that any particular storm was started by climate change? And Hurricane Sandy, that could just have been a, an anomaly. Well, that's the, the, the place of rejection. And while you may want to argue all of those points, and I'm happy to argue them with you, uh, I just suggest it's not very productive for you as a place to be. There's no innovation there. There is no pot of gold for finding something new. Um, there is only where you are. So if you aspire to that, you'll be stuck in this place of rejection. But generally, people move out of that into this place of, OK, OK, fine, you believe that, great. I just don't have time for it. It's not what I'm working on right now. I've got the bottom line to manage. I have a product line to release. I've got to get this report out. That's what I'm working on. That's sort of the non-responsive place. Uh, and again, you have other things to focus on. Some people do. It hasn't hit you in the face, perhaps. And that's where people go. Fr from there, they go into just compliance. OK, I'm just going to do the minimum possible. I'm not going to embarrass myself. What's, what's the least I can possibly do without getting caught and without going to jail? <laughs> Now, I assume everyone here, by the nature of the fact that you're thirsty for knowledge and learning and, and networking and building, you are beyond that phase. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's of course just a requirement of getting to it. But then that, after that, you begin to get to certain things that are kind of intriguing. Efficiency. Hey, here's a place we can save money. A lot of, a lot of companies are in this space. I don't know if I believe in it, I don't really care about it, but hey, I want to save money on my server farms. Uh, I was just over at Facebook. They've hired Bill Weil, who's, who was actually the, uh, energy czar at Google and is now the sustainability guru at Facebook. And he's working on redesigning and, uh, their procurement system for servers. Because every time you check your status, every time you friend someone, you are using a bit of server power. Um, and Bill's job is to make sure that those use as little energy as possible. And that energy they do use is sustainably produced. Now, that's a massive challenge. But for Facebook, it's all about saving money. I mean, there's no way they could afford with the, the servers we had 10 years ago to actually serve the type of data that they're doing. So it becomes really a point of efficiency. Then you start moving up into what we might call strategic proactivity, um, where a company really begins to embrace sustainability as an innovation tool and says, how can these limits, how can these, these opportunities to reach out to consumers in a different way. How can they help me build a stronger, smarter business?